How's it going, everyone? It's Zerker, and I am finally back with a manga haul for the months, yeah, months of September, October, and November. It's been a while, <laughs> so we got about, I think, 70-ish or so volumes to get through. A lot of stuff that is currently serializing, and I've picked up a couple new series. And I'm planning to drop a few series. So we'll go over all that and uh, yeah, let's just get it started. And uh, stick around at the end because I'm going to give the codes out that are on these three for 10% off on right stuff. Uh, they are good. Looks like indefinitely. So first come, first serve. They will be at the very end of the video somewhere or maybe somewhere in the middle. Who knows? But if you want 10% off, look out for when I hold these up. And I will reveal the code that is on the back of these. So that said, let's jump into the newer stuff that I got. And I decided to split it up into doing it like new stuff. And then we'll go by public, uh, publisher. And then we'll go into the stuff that's currently serializing in the same format. Publisher. And then at the very end, we'll kind of cover everything else that's miscellaneous that I got. So to kick things off, I decided to go ahead and start with kind of these publications or the publishers that I have very little of then we'll go into the ones I have a little bit more of so we're gonna start it off with volumes 16 and 17 of Hina Matsuri I believe this is wrapping up very shortly uh, I cannot express how much everyone should be reading Hina Matsuri uh, it is such a great slice of life comedy it's got supernatural elements to it if you want to get a quick deep dive into it or a quick like experience of it there is a one season anime that was released a couple years ago that is really funny. I enjoyed it. It's what turned me on to Hina Matsuri and to getting the manga of it. Uh, I am still a little bit far behind of Hina Matsuri, so I still have a lot of catching up to do. But I have enjoyed every volume that I've read so far, so I'm looking forward to how they're going to wrap it up. We're going to follow that with some Tokyo Pop series that I got, which is Rose Hip Rose. This is volume 4 and uh, Rose Hip Zero Volume 2. I believe, I could be wrong, but I do believe that this one in particular is a duplicate. Uh, I'm gonna have to find it in the kind of my completed uh, or fully completed sh shelf that I have right here and see if it is a duplicate. If not, cool. If it is, hey, look out for it on uh, Right Stuff, or not Right Stuff, on eBay or MangaSwap if you're looking for the series. Uh, if you like GTO, then you'll probably most likely like the series as well because it is by the same mangaka that did GTO. And it's kind of how I found it. Decided to look at some of his other works that he had releasing and found out this series was in English and decided to pick it up. So we got those two. I know one of these of, I can't remember if it's Rose Hip, Rose or Zero, but one of these two is finally completed with one of these volumes. Next we got Marginal Operation Volume 11. Let me tell you something. A while back, I bought, I think it was like volumes 1 through 8 or 1 through 9, but it was a whole bunch of volumes of this particular manga, and I've always seen it on the shelves at Barnes Noble. I always saw it on Rice Stuff. I always saw it on Amazon and everything, and I was always curious about it, but I never took a dive on it until I finally did. And I bought a whole bunch of volumes, pretty much, and never got into it. When I started packing and everything, I said I need something to read while I'm kind of winding down for the night. And I decided to read Marginal Operation, and I am so glad I took the dive on this series because once I read that first volume, I was hooked, I was sold, and I started buying what was also out there at the time. And I do believe this is wrapping up shortly. I think they're going to do 15 or 16 volumes in total. We're currently on 11, and man, this series is crazy. You know, I went into it not expecting to feel anything and i felt a lot <laughs> like this covers a lot of controversial topics you're looking at the r word that happens in here there's kidnapping there's child soldiers there's kids being sold for ch uh, into child uh, into child soldiers there's uh kids offing people kids getting off by adults adults using kids it's, there's a lot to take in with this series so if you like a darker series that has a lot of great 
comedic relief at the same time. Definitely give this sh uh, a shot. You'll be really surprised. I don't see or hear a lot of people talking about this particular series. And that's a shame because this is a really good, really, really well drawn series. And it's definitely worth uh, a space on your shelf. Next up, I got Berserk Volumes 4 through 6. Berserk was another series that I've been putting off on buying. Mainly because, you know, for what, the longest time I wasn't into Dark Fantasy. And I did watch the original, the first season, I guess, of the, of the anime that came out many, 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 many years ago. I did enjoy it, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, it just never clicked for me to actually like pursue any more into Berserk. A lot of my friends love Berserk. They always talk about it, how great it is and everything. And I always hear a lot of great things about it. And I will admit, uh, Kentaro is a fantastic, fantastic storyteller and uh, mangaka because he, his art in here is stunning. And when I was packing Berserk, volumes one through three is one of the series i also read during that time i was packing and everything and i fell in love with it so i decided to slowly accumulate berserk as i go i will say i am glad i'm going to singles rather than the deluxe editions as great and as beautiful as deluxe editions look i prefer so much more reading these single versions rather than those big heavy chonky books so but yeah looking to get into these a little bit more and like i said i'm gonna buy them probably three or three to five volumes at a time and then eventually get to whatever they're at like 47 volumes or whatever continuing with the dark fantasy genre uh i went ahead and got ragna crimson four through seven this is a series that's going to be i believe 10 volumes in total i'm not gonna lie uh, when I was reading those first three volumes of Ragna Crimson, I was not really particularly enjoying myself. It took a while for me to kind of get into it. And then once I finally stopped reading it and kind of started looking at other series just as I was going through my packing phase, I just couldn't help but continue to think about this particular series. So I decided it is a short series. I'm gonna push through it. I enjoyed it enough to where I wasn't upset about what was going on or what I read or what I saw. And we're just gonna wait till we get the rest of them and then we're gonna finish it and read it that way. We're gonna follow that up with the last two volumes of Summertime Rendering. Udon, you did a great job with this release overall. I'm very happy with these paperbacks. I am disappointed with the situation that happened with the hardcovers because I ordered all the hardcovers and then they got delayed. Amazon said they were sold out, so I ended up canceling, buying all these paperbacks, and then I find out they were just delayed and not sold out. So, But yeah, I'm happy with these. I got turned on this series when I was watching the anime. Really enjoyed the anime. I haven't finished it, decided to stop watching it, and I'm going to finish uh, consuming it via the manga so i'm gonna start all the way all over again all right now we're gonna jump into the seven seas and ghost ship new releases or new series i picked up and there's a couple in here that i'm excited for and there's a couple in here that i just couldn't give a damn about and one of the series i could not give a damn about is headhunted to another world from salaryman to big four these are the first three volumes i believe that's all that's out right now maybe volume four just started coming out uh but this was a really hard series for me to get through very difficult for me to read a chapter by itself it was just very boring very unexciting i just pushed myself every night to get through these <laughs> these chapters and these volumes and i did finish all three volumes i couldn't be happier to finish them because i want nothing to do with the series i am not going to continue the series and once i kind of figure out how or where to store all the manga i don't want these will be put up for sale on ebay or well, manga swap because i do not want these in my collection we're going to get into some of the raunchier stuff that Ghost Ship and Seven Seas likes to put out. And we're going to start it off with I'm Not Meat. This is the first volume. I believe this is the only one that's out right now. I <laughs> I got curious with the title. I didn't really read anything about it. The title just caught me and I said, okay, what the hell is this about? Uh, once I got it, I read the back. And basically our main character guy here, he is afraid of women. When women do approach him or try to hit on him, he envisions them as apex predators. We have our foxy lady right here who is being, in his eyes, portrayed as a crocodile and or an alligator. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I don't, can't tell the difference between the two, but he's envisioning her as one of those animals. And I'm curious to see how this plays out in the story or in the, in the panels and how the story progresses as it goes on. 
Another series I uh, picked up from Ghost, uh, Ghost Ship was uh, Devilish Darlings uh, Portal Fantasy. Grab, I, okay, I grabbed this one because of another series that's after this that I saw. And it was on the recommendations. And I said, well, shit, I'm buying these other three. So I might as well just get this just so uh, I look like more of a degenerate. I have no clue what this is about. Um, I'm going to have to read it and see. Skim through it. It wasn't shrink wrapped, so it's probably not that bad. Never mind. It is pretty bad. Um, but yeah, so we'll see what this one's all about. So this next one, i really not sure how I feel about showing these covers. I will show volume one because I feel like that is the most uh, YouTube appropriate, maybe. Um, but I bought all three volumes of this, and that is The Witches of Adamus. The plot or the synopsis sounded so weird and so crazy and so bizarre that uh, I just had to buy it and see what it was all about. I only got the three volumes. I'm just gonna, like I said, just see what it's about. They're all shrink wrapped and so we know what that means. It's a Nasty Man series. The plot synopsis thing on the back definitely lets you know it is going to be a very Nasty Man series so yeah i'm happy to see what this entails and this next one is a new series that i actually just finished reading i believe it was last night or the night before and i'm gonna probably butcher the name of this but it is kiru kill me this is volumes one through three and basically this is about uh, kiru here who is an assassin uh, she works for an organization in japan that deals with assassins and they get hired to do their hits while our main guy here on the cover of volume three he is I believe he is the CEO or the son of a CEO. I can't remember exactly, but is super rich because his parents run like one of the top five pharmaceutical companies. It's either in all of Japan or in all of the world. And he bumps into our girl here and decides to look into her further and finds out she is an assassin. So he decides to hire her to uh, assassinate him so that he can get closer to her and communicate with her and be around her more instead of just doing the normal thing and at the same time while he's doing that he is developing new technology and new techniques for protection within the human body like he implants like carb uh, carbon kevlar into his skin for bulletproof protection knife stab protection things like that uh he, he does all this weird stuff so that she can't kill him but she hurts him and it seems like as especially once we got into volume three here as the story progresses uh it's kind of giving you the hint that she is slowly starting to care for this guy so we'll see i will say that what i have read i did enjoy even though it got a little tedious at times but i was enjoying myself and i will continue to get this series until i either get tired of it or it ends Another new series I got and I actually really enjoyed was Chained Soldiers, Volumes 1 and uh, 2 here. I really enjoyed this series. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to, but I really did fall in love with it and had a blast reading it. Uh, the series is also by the same manga that did Akame Ga Kill and Akame Ga Kill Zero. And I believe Hinawa Ga Crushed. So if you like any of those series, then you will most likely enjoy this series. I don't want to spoil nothing, so look into it. If you like it, you'll like it. If you don't, you won't. But I really liked it and I'm going to continue getting it. And finally, a series I've been waiting for what seems like forever. Uh, I remember when the announcement came down for this, I got super excited because this is one of like these series that I've wanted physically released in English and it's finally happened it's finally here and that is Candy and Cigarettes volume one so this story is about a security guard so the old dude here is a security guard former cop uh, in Japan obviously and he retires has to take up security guard work to pay for the treatment of his grandson and the doctors eventually tell him he has a disease that's at this point incurable uh they can keep him alive but it's gonna cost them like a million a million yen for the keeping him alive pretty much or in comatose so to make ends meet he decides to look for new work and finds a agency that is offering the exact amount of money that he needs to take care of his grandson and he applies without really knowing what his tasks are he eventually learns that uh, our girl here is a an assassin and his job is to essentially clean up after her kills and even seems like from what i could tell help her out so but he mostly just does the cleanup of the scene so it looks like nothing happened but so far really enjoyed this series really enjoyed reading this particular volume really glad it's finally getting released it is a shorter series i believe it's it's completed in Japan with 11 or 12 volumes, so not 
a big commitment. And lastly, for the Seven Seas Ghost Ship, we have a series I never thought would get released in English, and that is Spriggan. Whew, I am so happy for that. I watched this one on Netflix a while back really loved it really enjoyed it but man i am so excited for this series to be released it looks like it's gonna hold up really well i'm not a big fan exactly of how thick it is but at the same time i had this on the shelf for a little while and man was it like it was present like when you looked at the shelf you just saw spriggan and you're like man i gotta see what that's about i believe this is gonna be four deluxe editions in total and if they look all if they all look this good then i'm gonna be very very happy like it's such an eye-catching design so i'm really excited all right moving on to viz we got volume one of dan to dan and god damn did i love dan to dan if you love ghosts supernatural aliens you'll love dan to dan this was such a treat to read it has a little bit of everything it has some action some etchy some comedy ghost aliens it's got it all and i loved it every minute of it so especially when uh i'm not gonna say because this is a little bit of a spoiler but anytime this particular person comes out it is a fun time because it is such a wacky wacky person give this one a shot check it out it is well worth your read following that up we got fujimoto's look back this is a great one shot completely completely different from fire punch and uh, chainsaw man but really shows that Fujimoto can do a lot of different stuff. And this was a pleasure and enjoyable read. So if, you, if you are a Fujimoto fan, definitely, if you haven't bought it already, check this one out and get it. Put it on your shelf. All right, moving into a couple of releases from Kodansha Vertical. And we're going to start with one series I definitely never thought I would see in English. And that is Shuzu Oshimi's Avant Garde. Cover should give you an idea. <laughs> what this is about she's obsessed with uh, this particular shape never thought this would be released in english but i am glad it is though i am glad to have more of oshimi's work because i do enjoy everything that he has put out so far and lastly for oh no we got a couple more so next up we have a new series that i just took a stab at it sounded interesting it sounded unique uh provides representation of a group of people that is Starting to get more of incitation in the manga side, so I really want to check this out, see what it was all about, and that is Last Gender, When We Are Nameless. Uh, this is volume one, and basically, give you an idea, people of different genders, sexual orientations gather at a certain uh, chic bar that is hidden in the public eye, while some come in search of themselves, others step into establishment, looking for sex and love. There are so many sexualities as there are people, and the patrons' stories intertwine as they struggle to find happiness. I'm really curious to see how they do this so yeah that's last gender so we'll see what this one's all about now this next series is a yen press one and this is one i've been putting off for a long time i've been very curious to pick it up i do enjoy history i do especially love super agent history i've just been putting it off i know the artwork in this looks so so good and it's so beautiful the covers are fantastic everything i've seen and heard about this really appeals to me but i've just been putting it off and that is Karo mori's a bright story volumes one through three i think there's like seven or eight out by now uh, but i've been putting this off off and I think it's time I check it out and this cover always makes me smile I just love this cover so much but basically this is a f historical fiction about a bride who has to marry into a different clan for peace I believe I could be wrong somebody correct me if I am stoked to see how this goes see if it's something I'm really gonna even enjoy I really thought long and hard about getting this series so I'm very curious to see how I'm actually gonna handle it or enjoy it. All right, so that wraps it up for all of the new releases and new series I got. And with that, I decided to give you a 10% off code. I know I said in the beginning, we're probably gonna drop these all at the end, but I feel like people will just skip forward. Here you go, if you want this code, go ahead and pause, put that code in and you'll get 10% off of your next Right Stuff order. All right, next we're gonna start it off with all the things that I have currently serializing on my shelf. And I feel like we should start it off with Seven Seas slash Ghost Ship. And we're gonna start it off with Gigant Volume 9. I believe this is the second to last volume. I am going to just wait till that is released because I think I read up to three or four. I'm just gonna wait till this is fully finished and then binge all over again from 1 to 10 or 1 to 11 whatever it is but yeah if you love gants then you'll definitely probably enjoy this series all right getting into the ghost ship of side of things we have parallel paradise volumes 8 10 and 11 volume 8 here was out of stock for the longest time so i couldn't really read on past 8 or past 7 so i had to wait 
And now that I got these, I can start reading them again. Another ghost ship one we got, and I'm st I don't know why I'm buying this series, but uh, Booty Royale, never go down without a fight. But yeah, we got volumes, uh, these tune ones, five, six, seven, and eight. I don't know how much more is coming out, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna dial it back a little bit. We got uh, the Iditan Dides, only no peace. Yeah, this is this is a dark series. It is dark. Uh, the manga, I mean, the anime is really dark on the first episode, then it kind of gets lightened again, and then it kind of switches back and forth. Uh, but from what I read of volume one and two, it felt dark all the way around, and it is still an enjoyable series, though I'm having a lot of fun reading this one. I'm preferring the manga a little bit more than the anime, but not. The, but the anime was good, but I'm preferring the manga side of things a little bit more. All right, we're gonna follow that up with uh, volume four of J.K. Haru is a sex worker in another world. I have no idea what's going on with this series anymore. I I haven't been able to keep up with reading it. I believe I'm on two or three right now, so I'm definitely up there to read, read volume one. Just to make sure, I do know it is a isekai. I do know that her and her classmate, who uh, I believe was uh, kind of like the dorky, emo-y kid, and when they get transported in this world, he becomes like this super badass like knight with all this money and power, and she becomes a brothel worker, pretty much. And I believe it's her trying to get out of that life and move up in the world and or move up in society i guess and lastly for the ghost ship seven seas side of things we have volumes three four five six of darling and the franks i'm gonna be honest with you i really loved the anime the anime did get weird obviously at the midway point so i am very curious to see how the manga will do things uh, i haven't heard a whole lot of things you know good or bad about this but i am curious just to see how and where things go if they're going to do anything different especially at that midpoint when things got really weird in the anime all right we're gonna move into i believe uh this is yen press and we're gonna start it off with goblin slayer side story year one volume seven i'm going to have to stop buying the series at the moment until i can get caught up with this and see if i'm liking where things are going in the series i am still very very far behind in goblin slayer in general obviously love the anime that's why i started picking up the series in the manga format side story year one i don't think i've i don't recall ever reading any of them and i've somehow accumulated seven volumes so i'm kind of yeah i need to get caught up and figure out if this is even something i still want to get all right next up we have volume three of 86 absolutely love the the anime that was done i don't recall reading the light novel uh but i am really enjoying so far what has been done with the manga side of things despite the extremely slow releases but if you like mechs if you like war controversial uses of people racism xenophobia and all that stuff this has got all that and so much more check this one out at least watch the anime it is very very good and we got oh i forgot i even ordered this one volume six of slash maidens this was a surprise uh i don't want to give too much details about this but if you like you want strong female characters with troubled pasts check this one out if you like uh horror films like kruger jason and all that leatherface this has uh this pays homages to it so check that out uh if you enjoyed akame got kill akame got kill zero then you'll probably really enjoy the art in this because this is done by the artist that did the artwork for Akame Got Kill and Akame Got Kill Zero. So I think this is his first solo work that he's done. And it's enjoyable, it's bloody, it's gory, it's in your face. It is not shy to the, depict certain things that happen in this world or in, in this series. So be prepared for that. Lastly, for the Yen Press, we've got Maruku Chan Volume 6. Supernatural, creepy ghosts. Uh, honestly, like don't let the cutesy covers kind of fool you. This series is quite freaky, especially when they talk and show the ghosts for instance like this cover looks okay comparing it to volume one where she's looking all cute but also scared and sad and then like you're reading it and then you come across some shit like this and you're kind of like okay what the hell did i sign up for that's that's what miruka chan is all about now we're gonna move into the viz side of things and we got call of the night volume nine god Damn, it's already at volume nine and I'm still like at five. I will say this, when I watched the anime of this, the one thing I wished was that they portrayed the night vividly and they did that really well. It really brought the nightlife alive in the show while that's something very difficult to do in the manga. So I will give the anime that. With that said, I still far prefer reading this series rather than watching it. I just need to get caught up now because I am so, so far behind since I started moving. And I remember, I don't know if it was in September or August, but I 
remember mentioning that I was tired or getting kind of annoyed or uninterested in this particular next series. Uh, I can honestly say now, once I read volumes three and into four, that Kaiju number eight is quickly becoming a series that I am really, really enjoying. I couldn't put this one down when I was reading it. I wanted to read the whole entire thing. I want, but I had to space it out so I didn't have to like unbox stuff during my packing days. But yeah, I was really enjoying this. Really excited with all, really excited with everything that was going on in here. Comedy was on point. Chuckling to myself every now and then. The action was great. The art and detail for the fight scenes was great. So I am happy with where this is going. Now I know this next series is truly loved by everybody in here. And I will not lie, I really do like this series. And I'm happy to have experienced it and I'm happy to watch it. But as far as the manga side of things go, I could care less for Spy Family. I just cannot get into read, reading Spy Family anymore. I just don't enjoy it that much. Get so bored reading through these chapters that I just don't want to read them. So I'm going to stop buying them. This is going to be the last way I buy it. I'm probably not even going to read this one. This will be put up on Manga Swap and eBay to be sold. All right, next up we have volume four of Record of Ragnarok. Uh, I'm actually, so this is the 26th. 6th of November as of recording this and I believe I'm going to start reading this one tonight uh, now that I have every order that I have placed for this series in uh, I'm gonna just read volumes one through four and see if it's something I'm gonna enjoy I know I'm gonna enjoy it but I want to make sure I'm gonna enjoy it uh, you can't go wrong with a bunch of freaking meatheads fighting gods and di deities and all that stuff so I'm all about that just senseless fun and fights and lots of blood and all that good stuff so and we're gonna do the second code for 10 percent off our right stuff so if you didn't get that first one here's your second chance to get 10 percent off again so yeah enjoy that crazy food truck volume 2 this is a fun series i'm not gonna lie i'm enjoying this one it has got comedy action it's got booba every other panel it seems like and the comedic and relationship do uh, relationshipness between uh or girl and the guy here is great it works it makes a story flow brings life and enjoyment to the series so i know this is only going to be like four volumes in total so i'm definitely gonna keep getting it because i'm actually i do enjoy reading the series it's a lot of fun next up with the viz we have volumes four through eight of children of the whales i took the three volume challenge on the series read all three volumes a couple months ago really enjoyed myself was really enthralled with the world and the way things are and i was intrigued by the mystery that this world has so i decided to continue reading it because i actually am very curious to see where things go i know this is a longer series that's kind of worrying me a little bit but it seems like this volumes are readily available so i'm going to eventually read these next five volumes and see if it's something i'm going to continue i'm going to take it very slow like i'm doing with berserk buy a couple here and there once i start losing interest then i'll stop and get rid of them lastly for the viz media pickups and i'm sure i'm no different than everybody else when they saw that they could get these or that these were coming back in print and on the shelves but that's the neon genesis evangelions three in ones it was a long time coming to get these this in the completed state on my shelf i love evangelion it there's still a lot i don't get about it but there's still something that makes me really enjoy it so with these three volumes i now have i believe it's all five of the perfect editions or whatever they call these deluxe editions i'm not really sure but yeah i can move these off the collecting and into the collected shelf and let them be beautiful there and now we're gonna make our way into the kodansha vertical comics side of things and we're gonna start it off with volume 16 of baki monogatari this is coming out literally like a volume a month so you or i realistically have fallen behind so quickly uh but regardless love baki monogatari Atari. I've watched the entirety of what was animated. I loved every second of it, honestly. So, and next up, a series that finishes on this particular volume that is Sensei's POS Live Volume 4. Very, very nice. It's a very dark but nice. It's a nice, dark, adult themed manga. So, if you're into that type of stuff, 
this is definitely for you. I was surprised by some of the contents in here and some of the things that happened in this series. Uh, I've only read up to, to volume two. I was gonna wait till I got this particular volume before I finished it, but there is some stuff in here that I was not expecting, but it makes sense with the content or I guess the nature of what things or like the adult life so yeah if you're into that definitely give this one a check out and another oshimi work we have and this is blood on the tracks volume 11 i actually enjoy this cover a lot with the red and the gold on the butterflies i really enjoy this now the one thing i'm curious about this particular series and maybe somebody can let me know is this gonna wrap up soon or is this gonna continue like is this a part series so like is this part one of like two or three like are we gonna go from this kid's elementary into middle school and into high school or it's like young adulthood with him dealing with the relationship that he has with his mom or is this gonna be until Oshibi decides to finish it yeah let me know if, if anyone has any idea let me know because i'm curious now if there's one thing i really enjoy it's very detailed and expressive atmosphere and work i guess in the panels and one thing that nihei really does well is that and with that said i finally decided to pull the trigger on buying the master editions of knights of sidonia one through seven if you remember i was collecting the singles of knights of sidonia and honestly, I have just given up entirely on that because quite frankly, there's no way in hell I am going to pay hundreds of dollars for a single volume when I can just get these that are still readily available. They are getting reprinted and look absolutely gorgeous in this format. So that was my decision and I'm glad that I've decided to go this route. Because honestly, when you're looking at buying like 15 and they want like $150 for it, that's ridiculous. This is manga, it's not comic books, even though manga is very quickly acquiring comic book prices. So, but yeah, eventually those volumes will be put up for sale. The single ones that I have just to make space. And with that said, I'm happy to have gotten these. <laughs> Because I read a little bit of blame in this edition, and I'm so glad I got them in these big ones rather than these singles. So, however, they are heavy as all hell. So I was, that wasn't fun lifting all that up. And we're gonna follow that up with uh, Grand Blue Dreaming Volume 17. Look, I cannot shill this series enough. Just like Kingdom Matsuri, I cannot shill that one enough. But if you like slice of life comedy with some romance but with people that are more around our age we're talking college age and older then get into grand blue dreaming it is hilarious if you don't want to read the manga watch the anime the anime is really 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 funny i had a lot of fun watching the anime and you can't go wrong in my opinion with either one i particularly enjoy the manga a little bit more but the anime was just as good and lastly for the essentially all of the manga that we have and on the Kodansha vertical side of things. We got volumes 12 and 13 of Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. I've read 12. 12 is exactly what I was anticipating it to be and where the relationship between Nagatoro and Senpai have really blossomed and you really get the sense that they are coming to terms internally with themselves about their feelings for the other person, finally. <laughs> So it's exciting. The second preview was uh, shown. So I'm very curious to see how far the second season is going with the manga. In other words, I'm curious to see how far the anime would go compared to where the manga is at. But yeah, I absolutely love this series. I enjoy it so much. If you want the last and final third op opportunity to get the third 10% off through Right Stuff, here's your last chance. There's your code. That is the last one, so good luck. And now we're gonna move into the art books and vinyl that I got. Uh, we're just gonna do these real quickly. I don't wanna get too much in depth with these. I will say that these two art books that I'm gonna show, I never really thought I would buy them. Kinda bought them just out on a whim, but that is Black Tights. This is the wide edition, I guess. Uh, this one is released through Dempa. Uh, I watched, I, uh, I forget what, what this guy's name who drew this particular character or all the females in this or the ladies in this or whatever but i forget what his particular name was but he released like a really short like ova anime i shouldn't say he did but he had a very short ova style anime that came out that i watched and it was hilarious i enjoyed it it was everything that uh, you expected it to be especially when you look at the covers of these here is i guess black tights this one is the japanese version uh i could have sworn this is black tights extra i could have sworn though when uh i ordered this 
this was the one that was supposed to be released through Dempa. I could have read it wrong. Maybe I clicked on the wrong link. Who knows? But either way, it doesn't matter. Hardly anything in here is in English. It's just literally drawings of uh, characters and black tights. So sort of the camera angle looks a little off from uh, what you just saw. A uh, battery died on me. So yeah, we had to find a spare battery. But anyway, we're going to finish off the art books with the art of Neon Genesis Evangelion Dermon, and this is just basically what you would expect it to be. It is a very simple art book of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, this has no relation that I can find of that has, or this has no relation to, that I know of, to the uh, production art book that I bought, uh, I think about a year ago now. This one is literally just kind of colored drawings of artwork for Neon Genesis Evangelion, clearly. You got sketches and all that. So yeah, I'm happy to have this. And this is a nice addition to my ever-growing Evangelion uh, shrine, I guess, or just collection in general. And lastly, we're gonna wrap things up with two vinyls that I got. I actually didn't realize I ordered this one. But yeah, we're just gonna wrap it up with the vinyls. And we're gonna start it off with, uh, this is the Dead Cells Volume 2 vinyl. This is, from my understanding, or from what I remember, the songs from the DLCs for Dead Cells that came out. Dead Cells is a fantastic roguelike game, pixel art kind of thing, so music is great. I always find myself kind of bopping my head to it. It's just a wonderful game to play. Good time killer and all that, so if you like roguelike games, then give it a shot. And lastly, we're gonna wrap it up with a lo-fi records release and that is Evergarden by Osaki. There's a back sign. But yeah, I'm not going to pull the vinyl out because, you know, screw oh, we can do this though. But I am thoroughly enjoying the releases that the lo-fi guys are putting out for their records. Uh, the one thing that does suck is it seems like every month they put out a record and they're about 25, 30 bucks a pop. And yeah, they come from France. So you kind of forget you ordered them and then suddenly they appear. So yeah, but that wraps up at least all the manga, vinyl, and art books that I got for the months of September, October, and November. Still got a couple more things coming in for, for uh, November, but those will be pushed to a later date, obviously. But anyway, that is the haul for this month. Glad to be back, glad to actually have an opportunity to kind of get back into the swing of, th uh, swing of things. Uh, this is a really long video, my voice is going out. So yeah, I will see you guys hopefully soon with a much smaller haul. Peace.